bad part about getting old. Not that you and I know anything about that. So, uh, Bill, I, I, I feel well enough with you. I can joke with you, right? You can joke um, with me. No, just did. You didn't. Anybody dresses like this, you can joke with. Me. <laughs> All right, so some people know this about you. I've heard you mention it, but I, I imagine there's a handful out there that don't know this. Uh, tell us what it was like. Oh, yes, sir. You go before ahead, you go ahead further, Mr. Jerry. Yes, before before yes. you go any further, I just have to say that I was not uh, convicted on what you're fixing to tell. Oh, okay. Well, that, well, then let's skip that one and move on to something else. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was good, though. So tell us what it was like to grow up with a father that was a preacher. Did you know that? So yeah. Bill's father was a preacher. Yeah, so so uh, it, it started out he was a deacon and then he became the pastor. And uh, so, I mean, it, it was Pentecostal. So there was a lot of rocking and rolling and shaking and everything in the church, you know, and it was always exciting to see that. Uh, I was, um, uh, I would always sit in the very back of the room because I was one of those people, I. I'm quiet and I'm a listener, you know, and, and you learn more if you just keep your mouth shut and listen to what people say. And so that's what I did. I sat in the back and I would listen to everything that was going on, you know. And uh, But uh, very early on, uh, my dad was also the song uh, leader and he would play the guitar. And me and my other brothers would stand in front of the altar at the church and he would play a little song and we would sing it for the, for the church, you know. And uh, those memories, you know, I mean, it's like yesterday to me, you know. I can't tell you what I did yesterday, but those I remember. <laughs> but it was a real blessing, you know what I mean? I, I grew up, I grew up with it, and uh, which is another thing that I, I, I guess I felt uh, a connection with Elvis with, right? Because of the gospel albums, and all those guys that came out back then, they had they had the history of that old Southern gospel music, in, in you know they were raised in it, you know. So I was raised in it as well. I remember going to tent revival, sawdust on the floor. And, uh, you know, things like that. I mean, I could still smell it, you know. It was a good thing. Yeah, I, I really love it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you can clap for that. Go ahead. You can clap for that. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I'm, I'm speaking, you know, a lot of cutting up between us guys, but I'm speaking sincerely now. Um, at, at this stage in your career, you and I both have been around a little while, but at this stage in your career, you're still at the top of your game. Like a lot of people look up to you. Uh, your line at the meet and greet uh, next to mine was probably the longest. <laughs> uh, so I, see, here's the so right slow, Bill, when you sign an autograph, see, and it, the line gets longer. The line gets longer. See, I, yeah, I, I yeah, should have yeah, told yeah. you that. So I, I, told you. I think most of them were both hands. So. I, I think most of them was coming in to get out of the heat. That could have been. Yeah. <laughs> I felt sorry for Jay was outside. But sorry about his was Jay outside? Jay was outside. Yeah, I, felt, I was like, man, Jay got the stacks thing, and then I noticed he was outside. I said, yeah. well, you know, it's not so bad in here after all. Well, yeah, yeah, don't be shocked. He looks a little tanner when he comes out. That's he right. He's out in the sun all day. No. So, in all seriousness, at, 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 in your life, because we all see what you put on stage, mm -hmm. but to you, what does it mean to carry on the legacy, the true legacy of Elvis Presley? What does it mean to you? So, to me, I mean, I, I was uh, I was always a fan of Elvis. Um, my my whole family were fans, and when I say that, uh, I don't mean there was velvet paintings on our walls or anything like that. Uh, it wasn't like that. But but I can't think of any relative that I had that didn't own at least one Elvis record, right? And so uh, we had five, and uh, and I still remember it. One was How Great Thou Art. Uh, one was Speedway. One was uh, Flaming Star. One was uh, uh, Come On Everybody. We had the cheap Elvis records, you know, the, the camp, the not dollar ninety nine ones. And let's be friends. That's what we had. Yeah. And so, uh, but whenever Elvis was on television, uh, my mother would get in the TV Guide. That's before cable. That's before the TV told you what was on. He had a little book. It was called the TV Guide. <laughs> and she would. I mean, every week we'd get the new TV Guide. She'd go through that. And she would look and see if there was an Elvis movie on. And, and back then, I mean, you'd, you'd catch an Elvis movie at least maybe twice a month, maybe sometimes three times, unless you got a triple feature they would show you. And, uh, and she would say, Bill, Elvis is going to be on TV. You want to watch? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I want to watch him. And I was a little kid. And uh, so uh, we would watch him. And, uh, and we, all, we all know how Elvis felt about movies. And, uh, but you know, you got to put your head in, 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 in his mindset at the time, right? Elvis, Elvis was the king of rock and roll, you know what I mean? And he was in these movies, and, and he didn't like it. But what he didn't realize was that there was little kids watching this guy in race cars, this cool hair, singing, 
fighting, always winning. And uh, he was like, he was really was like a, a superhero. I don't remember anybody in movies like Elvis to me, you know what I mean? And so uh, it, it inspired me, right? And I wanted to, I, I would watch a movie, I'd grab one of those records and go in the bedroom and I'd sing with him. And so, uh, and, and you want to talk about how God works in ways, right? I trained myself vocally to Elvis Presley at a very young age, never knowing that I'd be standing in front of an audience singing his songs and paying tribute to Elvis, right? I, I didn't know that. So, and I, thank you very much, really. I, it, it's true, I, 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 I did it for the love of Elvis Presley. I thought he was cool, I was a fan. I'm still a fan, just like you, the only difference is I wear these funny suits now. But, but I've worked, I worked in, 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 in steel factories, I've worked in dairies, I've, I've worked, you know, very hard throughout my life. And, uh, and I, I just never felt good working for somebody else, you know. And all my life, I, I, and true story, you know, I'm not lying to you, never drank, never smoked, I couldn't tell you what any of it tastes like, because uh, my father was a preacher and, and I was scared to death I was going to go to hell. And <laughs> but uh, depends on what your opinion of hell is, I don't think I've ever been there, but, but uh, I think I came close to it with a couple of his daughters. <laughs> But, you know, no, all seriousness, uh, we got laid off at the steel factory, and, uh, and, and I was one of those guys that let me clock in at the last minute and let me clock out the first one out. You know, I just didn't want to be there. Uh, so we got laid off, and a friend of mine told me about the Ultimate Elvis competition. Now, I did, I did Elvis in the 80s, okay, and uh, I think you all kind of know how old I am. Uh, King Tug was my brother. No, but, but I don't want to keep up all your time, but I just want to let you know that, you know, I, I, we was laid off at the factory. Someone told me about the, the competition in Memphis. He said, you really need to do that because he knew that I dabbled in it before. Um, and uh, so a friend of mine got me back in the groove of it, and I, I, I sharpened up, started singing with the songs again. And uh, in 2009, I, I won two below, and then I went to Memphis and won Memphis uh, consecutively. And first guy to do that. Yeah, and it, it, it was unreal. I, I couldn't win a competition to save my soul back in the day, you know what I mean? But sometimes, you know, you don't know what God's plan is for you. I felt like when I stood on that stage, there was five of us. I made the top five, and I was like, wow, I made the top five. I couldn't believe it. And I'm standing there, and they did a drum roll, and they said, and in fifth place, right? And I thought in my head, it's me, it's me. Here I go, here I go. They called somebody else, and I was like, I'm in fourth, I got fourth place, I got fourth, this was my mindset, swear to you, I got fourth place. They did a drum roll and they called somebody else, and I thought, I got third place. Now I'm in the money, I'm laid off. I'm going to get some money, now I'm in third place. They did a drum roll and they called somebody else, I thought, I got second place, it's more money. And now I'm standing there. They give the big drum roll, right, your heart's pounding, you're like, here it comes, here it comes. And in second place, and they called somebody else, that left me standing, and I was like, Oh my God, I just won this thing. I, I, I want to tell you something. I never ever was the guy that said, I got this. I got this. Because, I, you know, to, I mean, I, and, and none of us are Elvis, right? And, and we all know that. But I just never thought that I was, that I could have won that competition. But I did. So to me, they called me back from the layoff at the steel mill and I turned them down. Because I think when, when that opportunity comes, when, when that knock comes on your door, you don't know who's knocking. To me, that was God saying that I'm pulling you up out of the deep miry clay of that dirty, nasty steel factory. And he put me up on, he put me up here, right? Because God saw that, you know, with the Elvis thing, and, and maybe he put that in my life, I don't know. But through Elvis Presley, this is what I do now for a living, and I've been doing it since 2009. I never want to see another steel mill again. And the closest I get to a flame is singing Burning Love, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, but that's, that's my thing. <laughs> Bill, thank you, sir. Before you leave, let me ask the audience a question now. Do you see Elvis in this guy? <laughs> get out of here. Thank man. you so much. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Cherry. Thanks, guys. We love it. Thank you. Great job, Bill. All right, so I had to.